So by my count, it's been like a year and a half since Honor released its last Android tablet, the Pad 8. But the Slack gates have finally spaffed out a new one, perhaps unshockingly called the Honor Pad 9. And this is it. Now the Honor Pad 9 tablet normally costs just £199 here in the UK, but Honor is doing a bit of an Easter sale to celebrate Jesus popping up again as a reanimated corpse. 50 quid off that price, so nice one. Cheers, zombie Jesus. But is the Honor Pad 9 a worthy iPad alternative? Well, let's do a deep dive and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, as you'd expect from a modern tablet, the Honor Pad 9 is a skinny, attractive wee chap. You've got a full metal chassis, which both looks and feels premium. And the tablet weighs just 555 grams, a deeply pleasing number and pretty lightweight for a 12 inch tablet. And like the previous generation, the Honor Pad 9 is a butterfly's ball sack under 7 mils thick, so we'll slip into any backpack or whatever with ease. And I've certainly found it comfortable to clutch, whether it's in landscape mode or portrait mode. The bezels surrounding the screen are just about thick enough to give you plenty of grip and space, and thankfully, your fingers and thumbs don't seem to intrude on the action, even when they do slip ever so slightly onto that mighty panel. And Honor's all-metal chassis certainly feels reassuringly tough. Only thing is, no water resistance, unlike, for instance, Samsung's latest Galaxy tabs, but it's still pretty rare at this sort of price point for a tablet. And Honor is only offering the Pad 9 tablet in this singular colour, the Thrillin' Space Grey. So yeah, it's basically a big grey rectangle, so one of your pants exploding with delight anytime soon, but as I say, it looks pretty smart. And apparently, according to the press blurb, the decor design of the central back camera resembles the rising moon over the glistening sleepy sea. And speaking of the sea, these marketing guys really need to get right in it. Now it's worth pointing out that all you get bundled in the box with the Honor Pad 9 is a charging USB cable. You don't even get an adapter chucked in there. That'll be four pound extra. Thank you very much. Well, the box itself is rather bloody smashing. And if you pay £100 extra, you can also grab a keyboard case cover standy thing for the Honor Pad 9 that obviously doesn't come bundled in the box. And when you want to actually turn this thing on, there's no fingerprint sensor, so it's just a straightforward power button. But you do at least have a tasty bit of face unlock action here on the Honor Pad 9. So as you can see there, it is instantly recognizing my face and skipping straight into my desktop. So barely even see that lock screen. Gotta say it works a lot better than I expected it to. Even strong lighting or weird backlighting or near darkness doesn't really do much to put it off. And what software's running on here? Well, Honor fans will know, of course, it is Magic OS version 7.2 here. But most unfortunately, that is slapped on top of Android version 13. So I don't know when this thing's actually gonna get Android 14. And frankly, I wouldn't expect the firmest commitments to software updating from Honor. But hey, at least the Honor Pad 9 comes stacked with 256 gigs of tasty storage, Bananarama. Sadly, not expandable via micro SD memory card. There's bugger all slot action on here, but that should keep you going for a while anyway. Now, despite that Magic OS launcher that's slapped on top of Android, is your typical Googly setup. So you've got the Google Discover feed, you've got your apps tray, but then you've got a wee bit of Honor styling as well. So for instance, drag down the notifications bar from the left side of the screen and the control center from the right. This is where you'll find your media controls, your fast toggles, all of that good stuff. And thankfully, the Honor Pad 9 doesn't come absolutely stuffed with crapware. You've got a couple of wee bits like good old Facebook, of course. And Donna has chucked on a few bits of its own, like a dedicated gaming mode, which I'll bang on about in a bit. Of course, my favourite experience with the Honor Pad 9 so far was day one. Spent about 45, 50 minutes setting it up, signing into all my accounts, downloading my apps, getting that desktop looking all pretty. So there was a software update waiting, so I downloaded that, installed it, and then the tablet decided to completely reset itself, so I had to start from scratch all over again. <laughs> Great times. I may have quite loudly expressed my displeasure with the Honor Pad 9 right then with a phrase that rhymes with punting mucker. And multitasking with the Honor Pad 9 is a piece of cake. As always, just hold your finger on this wee bar at the top and drag it off to the side to split screen. You can then open up the likes of YouTube if you want to watch a video while you're browsing the web or whatever. But of course, this works a lot better in good old portrait mode. And you can even bring in floating windows by dragging your finger from the side and just holding for a wee bit. So you can get a bit of a three-way on the go on this mighty 12.1-inch display. 
Now squirreled away in that teeny wee bezel just above the display, you've got an 8 megapixel selfie cam. You've also got a dual mic arrangement on the Honor Pad 9, so absolutely does the job for a good bit of video chat action. And you've also, for some godforsaken reason, got a 13 megapixel rear camera slapped on here. Presumably so the marketing guys can spaff all that guff about sleepy seas and moons or whatever. I guess it could be useful for taking a quick photo of a document or something, but honestly, if you're using this thing when you're out and about to take photos or shoot video, God forbid, then you're just part of the problem. And one of the absolute highlights of the Honor Pad 9 is that 12.1 inch LCD screen. It may not be an OLED panel, but it's sharper than the previous Pad 8s with a 2.5K 2560 by 1600 pixel resolution. So movies, photos, etc. all look proper lush. Even though you don't have that dedicated HDR support, the likes of HDR10 or Dolby Vision. But viewing angles are respectable, the brightness and the colours don't really take much of a hit when your view is skewed. When you max out that brightness, it is strong enough so you can see what's going on outdoors as long as you're not watching anything too murky. And it's a proper full view finish as well, no selfie cam orifices or any other intrusions. Got the usual eye comfort modes and what have you, and also the screen refresh rate maxes out at 120 hertz for supported apps. And apparently, according to Honor, there are eight speakers packed inside of this thing. That audio is spaffed out of both the left and the right edge, and also down below. And I'm certainly happy enough with the sound that is spaffed out by the Honor Pad 9. I've had no troubles watching a video, the YouTube action, whatever, while in a very busy, very noisy kitchen. Let's just boost that audio, show you what I mean. Last month, an MWC, but so far, not a sausage. Not even a vegan sausage, which I'm going to just assume is mashed up grass cuttings all sellotaped together. Here's what I made earlier. So it's certainly loud enough when you max out that volume without absolutely balking the clarity. And suddenly there's no 3.5mm headphone jack here on the Honor Pad 9, which is pretty annoying. So if you are kicking back with a video or you want to listen to some music or something, you'll either have to spaff it out of those speakers or otherwise you can hook up some wireless headphones. Bluetooth 5.1 supported here on the Pad 9. Now the brains of the operation here is Qualcomm Snapdragon 6 Gen 1. Certainly a big step up from the 680 stuffed inside the Pad 8. Not too surprising given the length of time that's passed between the two. And that's backed here on the Honor Pad 9 by 8 gigs of RAM. I've got no qualms whatsoever with the everyday performance. You can even blaze through games like Genshin Impact as long as you keep them on the sort of medium -y graphics sort of settings. I do still find it kind of awkward playing fast-paced action games like Genshin on a big old tablet like this. But that screen was responsive. The frame rate stayed reasonably fluid as well. And the Honor Pad 9 didn't even begin to heat up even after a good hour of action. And I, Honor has chucked on its dedicated gaming mode, which offers a small handful of useful tools. Got performance mode in there, screen recorder, do not disturb. Not quite as fully featured as some rivals, but decent enough. And bugger all connectivity complaints as well, other than the fact that there's no cellular support here, there's no 5G option or anything, so you're stuck on Wi-Fi. But the Honor Pad 9 happily streamed whatever I told it to, no buffering or other issues. And the battery has also been upgraded from the previous Honor Pad 8. So you've now got an 8,300 milliamp hour capacity cell. And this certainly delivers when it comes to battery life as well, because the Honor Pad 9 can happily stream video non-stop for around 12 to 13 hours. So certainly an ideal travel companion if you're taking a long road trip, you want to bung something in your kids' hands to keep them happy for the entire duration. This will shut the wee sods up and it's also good for all day long mixed use. Even gaming on the likes of Genshin, you'll still get hours and hours of playtime before you'll need to plug this bugger back in. And unfortunately, you will have to charge this thing overnight, basically, because it's got slow OS 35 watt charge and takes bloody ages to power back up when it's drained. So that in a nutshell is the fresh new Honor Pad 9 tablet. As I say, it can be yours for well under 300 quid with those Easter discounts. And I really rather liked it. The performance is definitely a step up from the previous generation. Battery life is great as well. And that screen, despite not being OLED tech, is punchy, it's poppy, it's pretty bright and it's pleasingly crisp. Of course, lots of hot rivals around this sort of £300 price point, a couple of which I'm hoping to review soon as well. So please do pull subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers!